Good day, Erie. Thanks for joining me. Now, I've been sensing that there's been this feeling in the air that the American people are growing weary of the current state of this wonderful nation. People are sick of all these crooked politicians talking about how the economy is back on the upswing while you're waiting in the unemployment line. The problem isn't just local, but it goes through Congress and straight to the White House. If you don't believe me, let's just take a look at some of the recent events that have happened on a global level. President Obama has created this sector called the Council on Jobs and Competitiveness. What a happy sounding name. Makes you feel safe, like he's working hard to get your job back. Wrong. His decision to appoint Jeffrey Immelt, chairman and CEO of General Electric, to head this poverty-killing task force shows how little he cares about the man on the street and how much he wants Washington to stay on this business-as-usual track with billion-dollar companies controlling Washington. Now, I can't believe that Obama thinks that a man whose years at GE has had their stocks drop 60% since his takeover. Not only that, He's also borrowed billions of dollars in bailout money from Washington just so his company could stay afloat. Two large numbers come to mind. 140 billion in 2008, and recently, 182.5 billion. Now, where is this money going? General Electric has had several layoffs over the last five years, but They've been receiving billions of dollars in bailout funds. Huh, okay. Well, now I wonder if any of that money has gone towards their operations in India, where they've created over 20,000 jobs since 1997. I'm sure those are jobs that hardworking Americans could have done and helped stimulate our economy nationally and locally. Instead, some fat cats in Washington's and Washington and their CEO buddies are enjoying some extra cash in their already bloated bank accounts while they grin with their crocodile smiles telling us that there just isn't any more money and there has to be cuts in the workforce. <laughs> the president says this of Immelt. Well, we think GE has something to teach businesses all across America. I sure hope they don't teaching them how to borrow billions from the people without repaying them, how to send jobs overseas to help their economies, all while bulking their wallets. This announcement came the same week General Electric makes a huge deal with China to supply the country with 50 gas turbines, claiming the deal will bring in $500 million in revenue. Now, only 350 of it, uh, they say the American people will see. Well, uh, wait a minute. Does that mean that 150 million are going somewhere else? Now, shouldn't all that money go to the people, the American people? Now, where is the rest going? Probably to create more jobs overseas, to save a little, little extra cash. This deal was announced the day before China's president, Hu Jintao, his visit to the United States, the first in more than eight years. I think this is just another ploy to get the Americans comfortable with the idea of a socialist government instated here. The word universal just means that they tell you what doctor you have to visit. When I think of freedom, I think of my freedom of choice. I want to choose which doctor I want to treat me. Do you think the government is going to choose the best doctor that is more expensive to take care of you? The one with the most experience? Huh, probably not. They're going to pick the one who's the least expensive, and the bottom line is just not as qualified. Now, speaking of government-run agencies, what about Social Security? The baby boom generation is getting older, and it seems that the money that they were counting on won't be there. Many Americans now must wait five, ten years later to retire than they had previously expected. Why do you think the government wants that? Maybe, maybe they're hoping that in those extra years you might fall ill and, God forbid, pass away. 
Because if you were to pass away before you start receiving a social security check, well then, that's, that's just money that the government is saving. Now, where do you think the money that the government doesn't have is going? I'd say, it's safe to say, to bail out big business. How is it that you have to wait years longer to retire, yet some businessman in an Armani suit gets a billion dollar bonus check at the end of the year? It's because we, you and I, are just drones, worker ants for these corporate machines. The biggest corporate machine of all is the New York Stock Exchange. That's where all the trading of your money and the big business's money goes. And what does the Obama administration let happen to it? They sell it to the Germans. What is going on? New York has a rich American history. When you think of that great city, you think of the thousands of immigrants that came over and passed through the station at Ellis Island, many of which are our ancestors. You think of the city that never sleeps, the bustling of American commerce, and the integration of culture. Also makes you think of one of America's greatest tragedies, 9-11. New York is a symbol of how America can overcome disaster and stick together to fight a common enemy. Now, a symbol of American economy and New York heritage is up for sale. Letting a foreign company purchase it is a slap in the face to every American and a step towards a new world order. You may say that a new world order will never happen, but think about it. Banks are being bought up by a select few countries, the ones with the biggest pocketbooks. There is free trade with communist countries, while Americans are looking for jobs. And there is a cry coming from the Middle East for new leadership. Who's going to fix these problems? Well, the governments with the biggest bank accounts and the strongest armies. Now, trust me, it won't be long until all the world's money and resources are controlled by a select few with no concern at all for the average person. But to me, it's the average person that can make a change. The average person starts a revolution. The average person has a voice that, if said with confidence, will be heard. The average person isn't average at all. They just need the proper motivation and the tools to let their voice be heard. So I beg you, write to your local newspaper, start rallies in your community that show your distaste for the way things are being run. But most of all, remember that every great revolution started with a great man. So what we've learned today is that this corporate American system has got to stop. We have to start electing officials in every branch of government that speak to our beliefs and our understandings. That there is a real threat of a new world order and that you are the only one that can make a difference. So let's elect those into office that speak for you. The ones who are doing what's best for you me, God, and our country. Climb aboard my Arc, Erie. It's only going to get deeper.